So in case you weren't paying attention, we have a complete and utter psychopath in the White House. And no, I'm not talking about Donald Trump. He's a psychopath too. But who I'm referring to is Stephen Miller, who is unquestionably a white supremacist. Now, back in April, uh, Ilhan Omar correctly identified him as such, saying Stephen Miller is a white nationalist. The fact that he still has influence on policy and political appointments is an outrage. Now, this tweet actually offended quite a bit of people. For example, Professor Gadsad responded saying, he is a white nationalist in the same way that you are an Islamophobe, Ilhan. Is there no end to how idiotic and divisive you can be? Is there no limit to your dark heart? Well, as you're gonna see, that tweet from Professor Gadsad didn't age very well because Ilhan Omar was proven completely right. Now, this shouldn't be something that is shocking. Like, if you're paying attention and you know anything about Stephen Miller, it's pretty obvious. You know, if you connect the dots, you can easily logically deduce the man is a white supremacist. Now, if you were skeptical before, there's an article from the Southern Poverty Law Center that details his affinity for white nationalism. Now, this was revealed in leaked emails, and it should permanently put your skepticism to rest because this is based on 900 emails that he sent to Breitbart. This is based on conversations. Um, and what it really details, and these were obtained by Hate Watch, by the way, is um, it details the scope and the depth of, you know, his nationalism and his white supremacy. And it's incredibly unsettling to know that this is someone who's in the White House with this ideology, with this affinity for white nationalism. Now, as Michael Edison Hayden explains, the emails which Miller sent to the conservative website Breitbart News in 2015 and 2016 showcase the extremist anti-immigrant ideology that undergirds the policies he has helped create as an architect of Donald Trump's presidency. These policies include reportedly setting arrest quotas for undocumented immigrants, an executive order effectively banning immigration from five Muslim-majority countries, and a policy of family separation at refugee resettlement facilities that the Department of Health and Human Services Office of Inspector General said is causing intense trauma in children. So what are in these emails between him and Breitbart? Well, according to the Southern Poverty Law Center, he shared a link from white nationalist website VDARE with Breitbart. And this is a website that promotes this notion of diversity being tantamount to quote unquote white genocide or The Great Replacement. He recommended a racist novel, which is pretty overtly racist, by John Raspail. This is a French novel, and it's called Camp of Saints, and it fictionalizes white genocide, where a white woman is raped to death by refugees in one section of the book, and the main antagonist is an Indian-born person who literally eats feces. Now, this book is something that he recommended to uh, Breitbart. He wanted them to read it and write about it. This is also a book that Steve Bannon likes. Emails show he was upset with talk of removing Confederate statues right after white nationalist Dylan Roof carried out a terror attack on a black church. He reached out to an infamous Islamophobe, Pamela Geller. He shared a link from Infowars where they promoted, you know, the conspiracy theory about how Sandy Hook was a false flag, you know, so he's a racist and a conspiracy theorist shithead. Now that's just some of what they've uh, unveiled here. They're going to be periodically releasing more and more of these emails to kind of reveal more about Stephen uh, Miller, but here's what they conclude. Miller's perspective on race and immigration across emails is repetitious. When discussing crime, which he does scores of times, Miller focuses on offenses committed by non-whites. On immigration, he touches solely on the perspective of severely limiting or ending non-white immigration to the United States. Hate Watch was unable to find any examples of Miller writing sympathetically or even in neutral tones about any person who is non-white or foreign born. Now let me remind you that this is someone who's serving in the White House, who has a very direct impact on policy, who has instructed Donald Trump to adopt policies related to immigration that are hurting people in a really concrete way. For example, that family separation policy that Stephen Miller helped convince Donald Trump to carry out, that zero tolerance policy, where we literally separate children from their parents at the border. It's gotten so bad that in the year 2019 alone, 
Trump's administration detained almost 70,000 migrant children. This is because people like Stephen Miller are in Donald Trump's ear. This is uh, absolutely chilling. And again, it's not like this is really surprising. I think that most people who were just even casual observers of politics who knew anything about Stephen Miller knew that this was someone who was dangerous. He's a white nationalist. He is a white supremacist. And this is someone who should be nowhere near power because we are seeing the consequences of this rhetoric, the consequences of this thinking and how it hurts people. So, needless to say, Ilhan Omar was right about him, and she tweeted about that, reminding all of us how right she was, saying, as I said earlier this year, Stephen Miller is a white nationalist, and now we have the emails to prove it. This type of racism and hatred has no place in our government. Miller needs to step down now, and I second that. This exposes him and confirms what apparently wasn't obvious to people like Professor Gad Zad. The man's a white nationalist, the man is a white supremacist, He's dangerous, so he should not be anywhere near power. He needs to step down, but I would guess and say nothing will come about. Um, he's going to remain in place, and that's that. White supremacy and white nationalism in America, it's just been normalized, right? Where we don't even really think twice about it because there's been this far-right movement that re-emerged alongside the presidency of Donald Trump, and it's not just happening in the United States. It's happening elsewhere as well, but it's become something that people see more often, and as a result, they've become desensitized to it, and that's really troubling. We should never, ever normalize and become desensitized to this. We should never just accept white nationalism and white supremacy as something that is an unfortunate fact of reality. No, we have to identify it, root it out, and get these people out of power and shame them so they don't want to, you know, take office and be in a public position of power because this is harmful, this is dangerous, it's actually hurting people. So, of course, he needs to resign. He probably won't, but nonetheless, it is important that we know about this and we talk about this because, um, again, this is a dangerous ideology. I shouldn't have to say that, but I feel as if we're at a time in American politics where we do have to denounce white supremacy vehemently. Because people are either minimizing the threat or they're just not even acknowledging how, you know, big of an issue it is. Um, and we can't do that. We can't bury our heads in the sand any longer. We have to acknowledge the threat that this poses and how it's hurting people now directly.